Hello there, I got a request to put a video together to show people how to put spot levels on at a given grid interval. So I'm going to run through that quite quickly today, it's reasonably straightforward. What we have on screen at the moment is a surface that I've created. It's only got five points in it, uh, so the four corners if you like, and then one spot level in the centre in here. I haven't shown the spot level values yet because I want to keep the screen quite clean for the moment. So right now it's just a triangulated um, surface. Okay, if we want to put on uh, levels at a particular grid interval, what you need to do is come up to the Annotate tab, click on Add Labels, hover over Surface, and one of the options you'll find on the drop-down menu here is spot elevations on grid. So that does what it sounds like it does really. If we click on that, it's asking us for a grid base point. Now generally speaking what happens with the grid is it, it kind of works within a rectangle. So you would tell it usually the bottom left hand corner and then the top right hand corner. So I'm going to use the bottom left hand corner of my surface here as my grid. Now, the grid rotation, I'm going to leave that at zero for the moment, but you'll see in a few minutes why you might want to change that. Uh, but I'm going to leave it at zero for the moment. So to accept zero, I'm just pressing enter. The X spacing, that's going to be in meters. Now, um, you know, it depends really what you're after here. You may want a five meter grid interval, you may want 10, you may want 20. Just to kind of keep this drawing a little bit cleaner, I'm going to go with a 20 meter X interval. So 2, 0 and enter. And it's automatically defaulting to the same value for the Y spacing. So just to kind of recap on this for a second, the X spacing will be left to right. How far apart do you want those? And I've told it 20. The Y spacing will be up and down the page. And how far apart do you want those? And again, I'm just going to go with 20. So if I press enter here, it's now saying specify the upper right location for the grid so i'm going to cover my entire surface i'm going to click on on the upper right section up here now it's not letting me snap onto that but i can go just beyond it it'll be okay it's showing me a kind of a preview of the grid now with the 20 meter interval down here i'm just going to go uh what's well, asking me here uh change the size or rotation of the greater grid squares i'm just going to go no for the moment so you can see what happens. And here we have now uh, all of the interpolated spot levels on that 20 meter grid. Okay, so that's working out quite well. The whole idea of rotating it would be if you didn't want the vertical, if you didn't want the grids to be absolutely vertical or absolutely horizontal, you could rotate them slightly. But generally speaking, you do want them uh, kind of running north, south and east and west. So in most cases you won't um, be using a, a, a rotated grid. So that's pretty much it. It's really as simple as that. Um, it generates them based on the surface. So I suppose really the important point just to remind you here is that the data that's shown in here, this spot level here for instance is 25.16, that relies on the five points that were used for this surface uh, being inputted correctly. So the information that Civil 3D is presenting to you here is correct based on what you have told it about that surface. So if you make a mistake in creating your surface, the information that's shown on the grid is not going to be correct. Okay, so it relies on a surface being created first.